What's your advice to girls watching this video? Take something that you care about and a skill that you're passionate about and see how those two things might be able to combine into a really awesome initiative. And also, just be yourself and be true to yourself and do everything honestly and authentically. I'm Cammie. I'm Issa. I'm Amanda. And welcome to G Team TV. <laughs> Today's episode is all about entrepreneurs and change makers who are making the world a better place through innovation. And today we have two amazing entrepreneurs. First, we have an animal protector, and then we have a fashion designer. Stay tuned to learn how they're innovators for good. Before we get into today's episode, it's time to break the ice. Wow, nice one. <laughs> yeah, thanks. So today's question is, what song makes you feel good and empowered? Mine would definitely have to be Rain On Me by Lady Gaga and Ariana Grande. I've actually been listening to that song on Spotify as well, but another really good song is Look At Her Now by Selena Gomez. Those songs are great, but my favorite song is Dynamite by BTS. I really think everyone should stream Dynamite for clear skin. Comment below on Instagram what questions you want us to answer, and we might put you in a future episode of G-Team TV. Now it's time for another segment of Catching Up with Girl Scouts. Want to go to space? You might be able to with our Girl Scout Citrus Council and Space Kids, who along with Proxop and in cooperation with NASA, are giving you the exciting opportunity to explore space. Space Kids Global is offering three program challenges to get you involved by designing artwork, writing an essay, or proposing an experiment to send to the International Space Station. Check it out on the address on the screen. That's out of this world. Wow, Cami, <laughs> good one. I think we need a pun count now. Let's add a pun count. <laughs> <laughs> Share in the comment section something cool you and your troop are doing, and you may be featured on an upcoming episode of G-Team TV. Enough of us talking. It's time for our first segment. We have Naomi interviewing Liz Whitaker. Liz is a lifelong entrepreneur with two decades of her whole life dedicated to the pet space. She's the founder and CEO of Paulytics, and she's dedicated to creating profits through purpose with a focus on her true love, helping homeless pets. Hi everyone and welcome to episode five. My name is Naomi and I'm so excited to interview our guest today, Liz Whitaker, who is the CEO and founder of Politics. Liz, can you tell us a little bit more about your organization? Yes, hello. Thank you so much for having me, Naomi. Uh, yes, as you just said, I'm Liz Whitaker. I'm the founder and CEO of Politics, and Politics is software that helps animal shelters and animal rescues streamline their operations so that they can save more animals. Wow, that's really great that you have that mission because that's so important, especially in Girl Scouts. And so can you tell us a little bit more about your Girl Scout experience and how Girl Scouts helped you become the person you are today? So over the last year, I've had the uh, honor and privilege to work with the Girl Scouts here in Nebraska. They're called the Girl Scouts Spirit of Nebraska. And I've gotten to help them share more of my entrepreneurial journey, as well as help the girls come up with more uh, ways that they can sell cookies and things like that. And so the Girl Scouts has been a really wonderful experience for me to get to help other young women and help them you know, reach their sales goals and help them reach uh, different milestones in their lives so that they can grow up to be whatever that they wanna be, just like I have the fortune of doing myself. I think that that is so important, especially entrepreneurship. It's such a new field for girls to really shatter that glass ceiling. And so if you were to give just one piece of advice, what would it be? Oh, my one piece of advice is only always, one. <laughs> yes, always start as soon as possible. So usually when you're young and growing up, you find something that you're incredibly passionate about. And for me, that was always animals, dogs specifically, and getting to work with animals and making the world a better place for them. And so the thing that I think I did right out of everything, because there were loads and loads of mistakes along the way, was that I started early. I started as young as possible in starting my own different organizations, in being leaders in organizations, and trying to start as many nonprofits and companies along the way. So I was fortunate enough to start my first company when I was 19. And that means that I got to fail a lot really early on, which helped me be more successful as a younger person. So definitely my one piece of advice is start as soon as possible, find what you're passionate about and just keep going for it and never, never give up. 
Yeah, doing what you're passionate about, that's so important, whether that be your gold award or maybe a business you're starting or even just activities you do, you have to love it. And so you mentioned kind of obstacles. And so what were the obstacles that you faced, especially as a young entrepreneur? Yeah, so a lot of obstacles. You know, when you're starting your own company, typically a lot of people go into these things with loads of years of experience, which means that they have a big network within that industry that they're working within, as well as having money to start these companies. So we had none of that. I didn't have a lot of experience running a tech company. I didn't have a big network because I was still in college when I had started this company, and I actually came to Nebraska from out of state as well. So I didn't know a lot of people in this area. And so a big challenge for me was getting my name out there, getting people to try trust that I was really going to work hard and not be giving up because starting a company is incredibly difficult. And a lot of people do give up because sometimes you're working in things that you're not as passionate about. And so when you're hitting those roadblocks, you don't have that mission to drive you to keep going through those really challenging times. And so through all those challenges, that mission that I had of wanting to save animals and making this world a better place for animals and grow a thriving company through doing that was always my North Star. And that kept me going through all those really difficult times where I was doubting myself or other people were doubting me. And that helped me push myself through those really challenging times and make sure that I was always focused on that end goal, that end mission of making this place a better world for animals. Yeah, for sure. If you're passionate about something, you're willing to make that change and to make it fight, to make it work. And so, which is a great segue to my last and my final question is, where do you see your organization going in the next couple of years and what are your hopes and dreams? Yeah, so in the next couple of years, we're actually working on building out what's called electronic health records for pets. So this will allow pets to basically have a voice to any pet professional that they go to, because as we know, animals can't speak to us. And so we don't always know what their aches, their pains, or different problems mean. And so these electronic health records will be attached to their microchip number, which will allow veterinarians, groomers, boarding facilities, and even animal shelters be able to read through the history of that animal and be able to provide them with the best quality of care as possible. And so that's really where we're going in the next couple of years. We're so excited to help animals in shelters today and use that data later to be on, uh, to be able to help animals that are already in homes and living great lives in homes, but being able to make the world a better place for them uh, through better pharmaceuticals, through better insurance plans, through better products and through better nutrition as well. So in the next couple of years, we're really excited for the changes we're going to make in this industry. For sure. That's so important. And thank you, Liz, so much for coming on our fifth episode. We really enjoyed having you today. Thank you for having me. And thank you for letting me share more about politics. That interview was unforgettable. Okay. One more to the pun count. <laughs> and she's so passionate about animals, but the craziest thing is that she's actually allergic to them. So kudos to Liz for that. Thank you so much, Naomi. Now let's jump over to Bella interviewing fashion designer Maya Penn. Hi, everybody. Bella here. Today we'll be interviewing Maya Penn. She's an entrepreneur, an eco friendly fashion designer, an artist, an animator, and the author of the book. You've got this. Unleash your awesomeness, find your path, and change your world. Hi, Maya. <laughs> Hi. Thank you so much for having me. So at eight years old, you decided to start your first business, Maya's Ideas. What yeah. inspired you to start your own business at that, such a young age? So what really inspired me to start Maya's Ideas was a combination of two of my passions. One, I've always had a passion for art and design in all of its different forms, including fashion design. And two, I have always been a hugely passionate person when it comes to nature and the environment and protecting our ecosystems. That has always been something that's been so, so important to me from a very young age. And so when I had the idea to start my own fashion line, I immediately knew I want to find out the impacts that the fashion industry has on our environment. And the fashion industry can actually contribute a lot of pollution and toxic chemicals and carbon emissions to the environment, which is something a lot of people don't know. So I decided to make all of my items eco-friendly. So they're all made with organic or recycled or vintage materials. And that's basically how Maya's ideas started. Can you tell us a bit more about your creative process? Like, what keeps you excited about your business? What inspires you? So 
What really keeps me excited and inspired about my company is the fact that I'm doing something, of course, that I really love and that is a creative outlet for me, but I'm also doing something that makes a positive impact in the world. Since I started my business, I have always donated at least 10% of my profits to local and global charities and environmental and girls' rights organizations. And so that's another thing that really keeps me going is doing something, of course, that you love is huge, but also doing something that makes a difference is something that will really, really keep you motivated. And because when you see the impact that you make, it really, it really inspires you to keep going, to keep moving forward. And also seeing how many other girls that I can inspire is something that I'm really passionate about as well. I get so many emails and messages and comments from girls and, and teens all over the world who are like, you've inspired me to start my own business or to start you know, teaching other people in my community about sustainability. And that's, that's really what keeps me motivated and keeps me really inspired too, is knowing that I can really be a role model, which is mind blowing for me because so many other people have been role models for me in, in my life. Who are some of your role models? So my biggest role model is actually my mom. And <laughs> she is, you know, really always, both of my parents, my mom and dad have been really supportive of all the work that I do and all the ideas I've always had. Like when I came up to them as like a little eight-year-old girl and was like, I want to start my own sustainable fashion line. There wasn't this, oh, well, you're too young or, well, how are you going to like do that? Like we don't understand. They were always super supportive of me and always really supported my passions and ideas and just kind of let me do my thing, <laughs> which is <laughs> something I'm, I'm really grateful for. Um, but my parents have always been, you know, really creative. They are both musicians. They also are both very eco-conscious in their own ways, but I really took that and made it my own thing, <laughs> as, as you can kind of hear. Um, so I think that, you know, that's something, that having their support has been something that's been really great for me. And also, too, in terms of role models outside of my family, I've had the incredible incredible opportunity to meet a lot of the role models and people that i've looked up to over the years like oprah winry for example oprah chose me as her youngest super soul 100 entrepreneur and change maker and i had an opportunity to meet her and literally have brunch with her and I, I still can't wrap my mind around that at all because I grew up watching her and watching her show and her just being such a huge inspiration for me um, and you know somebody else that I've met who is just really really incredible um, is Michelle Obama I've met her as well and she's always been again a big role model for me and you know to be able to you know meet a lot of the people, a lot of the, the strong women that have inspired me and in my life and to, you know, really get that those words of affirmation from them is it's something that like it's like the highest honor ever. It's really incredible. So you've been quoted as saying it's good for things to go wrong in business. For the record, I love that statement. I think it can be really easy to forget that mistakes are mandatory and useful. Yeah. Can you tell us a bit about a time when things did not go according to plan? Like, what did you learn from that? Yeah, so what's really been interesting about my journey is the main thing that I have personally learned is how important it is to persevere and to keep going, even when things, you know, kind of seem like they're not going as, as you planned or, you know, maybe more slow going. Because, you know, it really, it took me, you know, a couple of years after I started my business for it to really start taking off. And, and especially, this is before social media was really, really big, but especially now when people kind of expect an instantaneous overnight <laughs> success, you know, and that's kind of programmed into a lot of us now, yeah. you know, you can really feel discouraged when it comes to starting something new and it's not really, you know, things aren't really happening the way that you expected. 
And so all of that being said, it's so important to continue to, to persevere, to stay consistent, and to continue to believe in yourself and the power of your ideas and what it is that you're passionate about. And to also to be creative and adaptable and find new ways and new areas that you can you know, take your idea to kind of evolve in its own way. All right. We're reaching the end of our time today, but before we sign off, I've got one more question. What's your advice to girls watching this video? My advice to girls watching this video right now is if you have an idea, you know, and a passion inside of your heart and it's something that you really, really care about, figure out how you can take that feeling and turn it into action. So take something that you are passionate about, something that really makes you excited and really combine that and see how you can make a difference and really make an impact in your own way. I think that everybody has different skills, different abilities, and different, you know, kind of roles that they can take on in the fight to just make the world a better place. And so it's really, really important to utilize what it is that you're passionate about and your different skills that you have to make a difference. Also, on top of that, I also really recommend for girls as much as possible to surround yourself with people that really uplift you and support you, like really make strong friend groups. Don't try to, to blend in or, or fit in or, you know, dim your light, you know, because that's something that really can, you know, really looking back later as you get older, like maybe you fit in with the kind of the cool kids, so to speak, but, you know, you kind of regret it because you didn't get to live as your full self or you didn't get to start that idea that people might thought was was weird or they didn't really understand why you were so passionate about this thing at such a young age. I think it's really important to also just to live your truth and be yourself because so many people are looking for more authentic people, you know, from looking for more authentic girls really just living as their, their true selves because that impacts every aspect of your life and everything that you do. And when you do everything, honestly, people see that and people really admire that. So I think that's a, another thing that I would really suggest to girls. I think those are the two things. Take something that you care about and a skill that you're passionate about and see how those two things might be able to combine into a really awesome initiative. And also just be yourself and be treat yourself and do everything honestly and authentically. Maya, thank you so much for sharing your time, your talent, and your passion. I'm really glad to have gotten the chance to talk with you. And I'm sure you inspired a lot of the girls watching today. <laughs> um, awesome. So thank you for talking with me. <laughs> wow, Maya and Bella gave us so much to think about. And as Maya said, we are never too young to make a change in the world. No dream is too wild. If you follow your heart and your passion and be true to yourself, you can do it. And now, since we just met a fashion designer, Maria is going to take us around the world to see girl guides and girl scouts show off their uniform fashions. Hi girls, in case you don't remember me, I'm Maria and I'm the host for this segment Girl Scouts Around the World. Even though WAX is only one organization, each country has a unique and different thing. I'm talking about the uniforms. I'm so excited because today we're going to see some of the different uniforms from all around the world. Let's go!
that was amazing. All those uniforms were so unique and beautiful. I know we are still missing some countries. So please, if you want to share your picture, just do it through Instagram stories and don't forget to tag Girl Scouts of the USA. I hope you enjoy it and see you next time. Bye! Wow, that was so cool. The way each girl guide embraces their culture through the Girl Scout uniform makes me feel connected to my sisters around the world. In the USA, cadets and seniors and ambassadors recently got a new look. There's lots of pieces from uniform to casual wear. My favorite piece was the cargo skirt. Okay, so when I saw the launch, I was really excited for the cargo skirt as well, but I also love a good pair of joggers and leggings, so I will definitely be adding those pieces to my collection. Also, can we please talk about how every single thing has pockets? I think that's so smart and I love it. And I, as Amanda, also really like the leggings and joggers. I would wear these all the time, and I love the way that Girl Scouts has made it so easy to let girls express themselves through their clothing. This was an amazing show. We got to meet two young entrepreneurs who are using their brains and skills to make the world a better place. And I really loved learning about Maya Penn and how she leaves her mark on the world by inspiring other women and girls. My favorite part was seeing Girl Scout uniforms from around the world. It makes me happy that we can connect with girls across the world through Girl Scout. I also like my troops cameo. <laughs> shout out to 1896. <laughs> Another pun, Cami, but shout out to your troop. And if you're feeling inspired to follow your passion, check out Girl Scouts, where we just released a new set of entrepreneurship badges. The positive affirmation we are going to leave you with today is from one of our guests. Be creative, be curious, and watch as your awesomeness is unleashed. From the amazing Maya Penn. Well, Maya Penn truly is amazing, and so are all the incredible people who made this episode possible. So thank you to all of the guests, segment leaders, hosts, and you guys for watching this episode. Yes, thank you everyone for working so hard. And if you like this show, please watch next week. You can find a new episode of Girls on Girl Scouts IGTV every Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if you miss an episode and want to catch up, check out Girl Scouts' YouTube channel. Next week's episode is going to be on animal conservation and all about the way Girl Scouts get outdoors. You can also connect live with girls from around the country to talk about the show. There are a few different days and times this week where you can get on and meet the girls from all over or just hang on and talk. Look for a link in the show description below. And we'll see you next week on G-Team TV. Peace out, Girl Scouts.